there is a lot of phenomena present in the water spark type circuit, which, given the current laws, do not make much sense. This is a test wide open uh, with my little setup. Let's see what she'll do. That's about 50 volts. About 120.
Clark sort of here, is at this present time not running a house uh, in a third world country on free energy or anything, but there is awareness and lessons contained um, in there waiting to be harnessed. So what direction uh, is this uh, application of this device heading? Well, currently we're all working together uh, in an open forum towards a potential 100% water powered engine, educational plasma circuit, and the most useful being a firestorm spark plug uh, duplication or plasma spark plug to increase the combustion of fuel for better fuel efficiency and to cut pollution. consider plasma technologies to be a relatively new field of science. Most of them would not have heard of it. However, it is not a new field. It is a neglected and a suppressed science. People have already achieved a 100% water powered engine using a plasma ignition source. These include Herman Anderson, Stanley Myers. car that runs on water instead of gasoline. Can it be true? Well, inventor Stanley Meyer made an announcement today in Colorado Springs. He says he's come up with a device that will hook up to any engine and allow it to run on good old H2O. News 13's Kurt Goff tonight on the possible impact of the water fuel cell. The national Stanley Meyer says the answer to dependence on foreign oil lies all around us. In seawater, tap water, and rainwater. Any kind of H2O, he says, can power just about every type of engine. How? With the water fuel cell. It fits in the palm of his hand, but it could revolutionize the world. You're talking about a pollution-free, totally new source of energy, the voltage disassociation of water. The fuel cell converts water into a gas, hydrogen oxygen, which is released in the form of thermo-explosive energy. So the water fuel injector simply replaces the spark plug. We hook it to a hydrogen computer system which regulates and meters the flow going into the injector. It processes the water in such a way to release its thermal explosive energy. 
The man who invented an engine that can run on water says he's been offered a billion dollars in cash by oil producing countries to sell his patent. So far, he hasn't sold. Environmental specialist Jan Porter talked to the inventor who thinks that the U.S. auto industry could produce cars that run on water now if they wanted to. Our industrial base of the world is based on the utilization Stan of Stan Meyer has a car that runs on water, and that's drawing crowds okay. at this year's Extraordinary Science Conference in Colorado Springs. Myers has developed what is called the water fuel cell injector. The injector breaks down the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, and the hydrogen is what powers the car. Basically all we do is replace uh, the spark plug and replace it with the water fuel cell injectors you see right here. Mm -hmm. We simply feed ordinary non-processed water, or processed water in here, and as the water goes into the injector, uh, it hits a very high pulse voltage frequency, which instantly converts it into thermal explosive energy. And as a result, we can run this car down a road on water. Meyer's invention was introduced in Britain earlier this month, and now the Brits have followed him here. That we recently took a scientific delegation to witness Stan's work, to really evaluate it, and came back saying, this is one of the most important inventions of the century. Both who suffered suppression, and plasma infusion technology is already well established in the black light power company. The GEEK process and Firestorm spark plug. However, there are no public access or energy applications currently in use or widespread faculty awareness of this plasma related process. Also, all of the current proprietary inventors of these plasma applications um, have encountered political and economic conditions, not to mention neglect from the mainstream faculties uh, due to their disbelief and just the lack of uh, unwillingness to investigate or understand the process. Now, here you can see part of the black light power process called RT plasma formed with a low field at low temperatures uh, from atomic hydrogen generated uh, at a tungsten filament uh, and strontium which was vaporized by heating the metal. Now, typically requiring very high fields of, or power Plasma formation under these conditions is extraordinary and there is an agreement among so-called experts in the field that this cannot be explained by conventional plasma physics. Now, others uh, unknown work is Dr. Quill Chakanov, Joseph Papp, sort of plasma physics, uh, cold fusion, the GEEP, black light power process, and others. They all could have had this technology in circulation years ago. However, due to the mainstream curricula's unwillingness to upgrade their knowledge and or investigate it, it is prevented all from any real time momentum. When you add the political and economic conditions to this, not to mention cartel greed experiences, uh, as has been reported in the Paul Pantone case, then you really only have one way to make sure uh, these technologies see the light of day. And that is through the collective collaboration of the underfunded and largely unknown open source engineers uh, efforts. This is uh, why now we are seeing practical circuits reaching the public access now through the plasma uh, spark plug circuit.
Hello and welcome to the Nightly Automotive Report. I'm John McElroy. Cars and engines have changed a lot over the last hundred years, but not spark plugs. Yet, a local inventor has come up with a new design for spark plugs that allow an engine to run at a 24 to 1 air fuel ratio. Today, engines run at a 14.7 to 1 ratio. By running an engine with a lot more air, the inventor claims fuel economy can improve by 40% and emissions can drop by that much. And as our Laurel Hess explains, he does it with spark plugs. They're called Firestorm Spark Plugs. They're the brainchild of Bob Krupa of Farmington Hills-based Century Development International Limited. The technology is the difference in the configuration of the bottom or the, the power end of the plug. Uh, it fires better, uh, it's going to last longer, and in general, it's a change that's been wanting to come for years and years and years. Krupa says another big advantage of the Firestorm spark plugs is that they are environmentally friendly. They almost eliminate emissions, and they drastically increase miles per gallon. This is a slow motion view of exactly what the Firestorm plug looks like compared to a conventional plug. The plug that you're looking on the right side is the standard spark plug. It has platinum on the center and platinum on the ground. The one on the left side is the new design Firestorm plug. Both are given identical voltage and current and they're fired in a pressure chamber under nitrogen and that's the way it runs in the, in the engine and that's the way you see it. Krupa says when you fire a regular plug, it's like turning on a pen light. When you fire a firestorm plug, it's like turning on a spotlight. He installed the plugs on this T-Bird. Before the new plugs, the vehicle got 23 miles to the gallon. After the firestorm plugs were installed, he says, the car got 33 miles to the gallon, a 44% increase. It's going to help the lawnmower industry. Um, it's going to help CAFE. It's going to help emissions, EPA. Uh, in general, it's something that's been coming and coming and coming for years, but it's finally here. For the Nightly Automotive Report, I'm Laurel Hess.
There is a need for security and support from the public outside of the normal corporate uh, environment regarding alternative and suppressed free energy technology or any technology which uh, is an alternative to fossil fuels. Now of the many past and present case files which illustrate this, uh, in particular is the related research of the Firestorm spark plug. Now this is one of many perfect examples. Uh, tests conducted with the Firestorm plugs showed that as a result of the plug's design and the plasma process that it uses, the uh, ignition system, uh, they would never wear out. Um, Robert Cooper's first Firestorm plug was made back in 1996 uh, and it's, it's since uh, encountered a lot of opposition to their introduction and manufacture. There are still no manufacturers of today, uh, 2009. Now, Robert reports that he achieved a 44% uh, gain in his miles per gallon and could reduce the emissions by uh, the same percentage by using these plugs. Now, these results are nothing to take lightly, uh, especially considering that just by using the spark plug alone, we could take up to 44% of the pollution off uh, all the cars uh, in the world and basically uh, relieve an economic burden. If the fact that this plug has been around since 1996 and has still not, uh, still not in use today isn't uh, enough of a reality check for alarm. Another individual, Ian, from the UK contacted us. Now he showed us a platinum ball tip spark plug. Uh, which he made as far back as uh, 1991. Worked for the uh, Ford motor company. Uh, he was not employed exclusively to develop spark plug technology. Uh, Ian just intuitively developed uh, an idea, uh, manufactured it and tested it uh, in Fords. His plug turned out great and ended up not really being uh, any dearer than the normal plugs to make. However, Ian reports to us that this upset a lot of people higher up. Uh, the plug is a double platinum ball tip spark plug. They were manufactured from scratch, just some extra processes uh, involved. These were built on the same assembly line uh, as the standard uh, auto light plug. Now, whilst the Firestorm plug relies on lots of earth to slow down the uh, oxidation uh, when the plug fires, Ian's plugs, uh, his platinum ball tips, actually clean themselves every time uh, they fire. Now, Ian manufactured the ball tip concept 18 years ago, and nobody was interested then. Uh, the plug never got into public hands. Uh, as of today, 2009, both these plugs have never made it to the production line, and there is no way they can by the current uh, corporate environment. Who is going to make a spark plug um, that will take revenue out of the uh, oil company's pockets, will not wear out? Uh, if you're only for the accumulation of uh, personal wealth and not the well-being of our planet, then you have no business endorsing and manufacturing these plugs. How many corporations today in Fortune 500 help the planet to capacity outside from their own self-interest and wealth, which they cannot spend in their lifetime? Uh, if the proposed granted Panacea Research and Development Institute was in effect, uh, all alternative and free energy technology which has political and economic conditions attached to it would be protected. Any technology that is in danger of interference or lack of endorsement as a result of any corporate interest that feels uh, they could lose financially from having this environmentally sound technology in public hands uh, can be protected. The case of Ian and Robert's plugs are 
just two examples of many others uh, to cover the complete extent of suppressed energy technology uh, it would take a four hour documentary needing to span generations uh, since the 1800s to show how bad the problem is uh, we have done over five years of research into this issue and we'll be releasing a documentary covering uh, the extent very soon in the case of Ian's and Rob's uh, plugs and other suppressed technology, the non-profit organisation with given resources uh, can and would contract someone to produce these spark plugs uh, or technology as an environmental public service or environmental initiative. Also endorsements, carbon credits and subsidies uh, could also be allocated to help the public fit these plugs to their cars to save energy and stop pollution. The Panacea Institute, uh, if supported publicly, can help create public pressure to uh, ensure this. These plugs can still be done today. Uh, ask yourselves how else will they get these plugs and other technology out there to capacity. Uh, there, there has been a lot of years gone by since the 90s and these plugs have been ready then uh, we must understand why they are not out there now. Then look at the same case with why, say, the Avion car, the nickel metal hydride batteries in the electric car were bought out and shelled. What is there to prevent this from happening today? And again, how else would these uh, technologies reach the public otherwise? if not for an institute like the uh, Panacea Proposed Granted Research and Development Centre, which uh, is set up specifically to create security and grant support for this issue. Panacea non-profit organisations uh, Proposed Granted Research and Development Centre is an institute that is needed to assist the government and inventors and help create security for this technology. Plus, this institution is needed to help advance uh, faculty education. How can a government protect uh, technology which threatens a multi-trillion dollar oil industry and help the public gain access to them? Nothing in today's society has faced up to it. Uh, could consider the Panacea Institute as a natural selection. Uh, how else can we ensure security with the government from big oil or other corporations from subjugating the public uh, has can be seen in the uh, recent case of the uh, EV1 electric car. How else are you going to protect an inventor and make sure the faculties and public are aware of any environmentally sound technology uh, that threatens the biggest industry in the world? Bigger than drugs, bigger than defence, the oil cartels. How else are you going to stop a corporation from controlling the technology or buying uh, the patent and keeping it from manufacture, thus public access, uh, as is illustrated in the recent uh, EV1 electric car case. More cases can be shown. They have more money than you to control technology, more influence. How else are you going to make sure that it gets disseminated publicly and is secure in public knowledge? Who else is telling you about these technologies? The Department of Energy, the Australian CSIRO, the government, the oil companies, any universities? Can engineers and inventors be relied on on their own to disseminate? Sobering track record is you cannot ensure security in the current infrastructure. That's why as of today, 2009, we have enough cases to show the merit and need for the particular institution and how we must begin critically disseminating this technology and performing uh, further research and development to make sure the next generation uh, has a planet uh, which we can sustain today by this commitment. The Panacea Institution is the only defence in the public eye. Uh, it is the only security, typically all earth friendly uh, or free energy technology uh, in the, or technology in the free, this free energy genre would be validated and registered 
with us through our proposed granted research and development centre. This will not only have the security of being in the public eye, but also the security of the open source engineers keeping the technology known, as is already the case with these Firestorm replication plugs. Uh, there are environmental organisations which the government allocates uh, resources to uh, from the taxpayer. For example, the CSIRO in Australia, uh, the Department of Energy in uh, the United States. Uh, these are all taxpayer funded and science ones who annually contribute uh, grants to help the public. Now, all consolidated together could make uh, an objective grand total for this task. The non-profit industry is a $200 billion a year industry in the USA alone. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're, we're all working on our own budget and relying on the odd donation, so unfortunately all working it under capacity. Another function of security, which is proposed to be part of the Panacea Research and Development Centre to help the public, uh, as we are a non-profit org, would be the mandatory uh, registration of all free energy related technology by legislation from the Patent Office as a public record. Now, after this, all free energy technology would need to be uh, processed through the Panacea Centre and is kept in public knowledge. There is then a clause associated with it which states that a company or corporation that shows interest can only buy the patent under a specific clause, and that is that they are given a maximum of a two-year period in which to produce the technology commercially. After this, any rights to withhold the technology are lifted. If access to this technology was regulated and protected so that a company can only buy the patent under an agreed and consensual clause, which stipulates that they are given a fixed two-year period in which to produce the technology and create public access to it. If not, then the patent rights to the technology would be lifted. If this was the case, would uh, energy suppression be po possible? Would the case of these plugs, the electric car, the nickel metal hydride batteries, have occurred? Or even technology such as Nathan Stubberfield and Tesla's uh, fall into obscurity 100 years ago. Grants are needed for security. If, techno if technology from Tesla made it through by, the, by this secure infrastructure, how clean would your environment be today uh, for your kids? I mean, would you have saved more money and protected the next generation's environment? How much of an economic burden would be lifted? All technology registered with us in this situation, in coordination with the Patent Office, is also a great way to advance education, help governments and help others get off the ground, so to speak. The Institute is also about supporting open source engineers. Uh, if it was not for them, you would not be here looking at these plugs and would not have access to uh, any of their related education. Plus, uh, they would not have been reproduced and secure in public hands. Now, the open source engineers uh, have been responsible for the Plasma Geek technology and Plasma Water Spark plug uh, remaining active and improving the R&D. And only through their efforts has it advanced into practical, uh, usable systems, public access. Uh, as we are. Uh, currently uh, seeing with this uh, plasma spark pipe circuit. We've come a long way and only by the open source engineers um, collectively working together um, to all our common goals. The open source engineers are changing uh, the world like no other can. Uh, open source is the security we need. There are too many inconsistencies. 
with the state of the West conditions, uh, greedy retailers, political, economic conditions, or energy suppression, and faculties um, not paying attention. So where does that leave the public? Well, for all this neglected and abused science to advance to capacity, a safe, centralised research and development centre uh, in the public eye uh, is a necessity uh, to help create security in the public eye and advance education, plus provide a conduit and interface for the even the proprietary metrics of this plasma and other particular sensitive and misrepresented and misunderstood technology into public awareness. A non-profit research and development centre exclusively for open source and for these inventors' particular technology is a place where faculties, governments and the public can safely ensure consumer awareness and demand. And this is what we need um, regarding these technologies at this time. So they will remain unknown. The non-profit organisations uh, proposed granted Panacea Research and Development Centre is intended to serve as this platform uh, for the scientific community and as a public service to perform this function and endorse open source engineers' research. We need to continue uh, our present direction in designing, improving and applying this uh, water plasma spark plug to release the energy uh, necessary to drive a piston down an internal combustion uh, engine, as well as the multitude of other applications to which this technology can be applied. Peter Grano arbeitete für das US Militär an der Entwicklung elektroenergetischer Waffensysteme. Eines Tages kam er auf die Idee, Gewehre mit Wasser statt Patronen zu laden. Zusammen mit Richard Hall entwickelte er das Projekt weiter. Man nehme einfach einen Blitz. Wasser und Elektrizität. Die gewaltigen Kräfte eines Gewitters im Lauf eines sogenannten Wassergewehrs. Ein Fingerhut voll Wasser und ein Funke elektrischer Hochspannung genügen und Wassermoleküle werden auf 5000 Stundenkilometer beschleunigt. Und es durchschlägt 6 mm starke Aluminiumplatten. Einfach durch. Aber die ersten Wasserexplosionen waren heftiger, als die beiden vermutet hatten. Bei der Explosion kam mehr Energie raus, als wir reingesteckt haben. Da ist Energie frei geworden, von der wir nichts wussten. Wie sie entsteht und woher sie kommt. Uns war sofort klar, sie muss aus dem Wasser selbst gekommen sein.
we're definitely onto something here with open source engineers like Luke, uh, Ozzy, Greg, Groundly, Alex, Aaron, Capacitor, uh, 70, Xbox, you guys all know who you are, and others, even some of the Panacea guys, actually doing experiments and coming up with real results. You know? These engineers providing this research have worked on it with no budget and uh, true to their word with open source disclosure. The non-profit organisation, Panacea, uh, intends to support open source engineers working with this and other uh, disclosures. The non-profit organisation uh, and these engineers, they all, all require grants, resources, faculty recognition and security. Now, all this uh, can be created in Panacea's proposed granted non-profit public research and development centre. For those able to help this effort, please contact us or for those who can help the engineers mentioned, please contact them or us.